Welcome to the Joy of Music. Today, presenting a special program from La Brie in Switzerland, featuring Diane Bish, the First Lady of the Organ, with special guests Edith Schaefer, Joseph Molnar, and the Florida Chamber Ensemble. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Diane Bish. We would like to welcome you today to the joy of music as we visit Switzerland and the famous spiritual retreat, La Brie. La Brie, which means shelter, was started many years ago by Francis and Edith Schaefer. La Brie has become famous for its spiritual influence on the lives of people and also its influence on the attitudes of people concerning Christianity and culture. Today on the program, you're going to be hearing music from La Brie, and we're going to be speaking with its founder, Edith Schaefer. We open the program in the little chapel at La Brie, and hear excerpts from the Sonata in F major for flute and organ. in the heart of one of the most beautiful countries in the world, Switzerland. And we are at a place called La Brie, a place where people have come for many, many years to find answers to their problems and their needs. La Brie, which means shelter, was started by Francis and Edith Schaefer. And I have with me today Edith Schaefer. Thank you, Edith, for being on The Joy of Music. Tell me, Edith, mm -hmm. how do people find La Brie? How do they hear about it? And, you know, because right it's now it's known all over the world. Well, um, I would say the basic way that people have come has been by word of mouth. One person has told another, whether it's on a train, a perfect stranger they've met, or in an ashram, or in a, in a kibbutz or someplace, uh, talking uh, Larry here, who 
uh, has been your contact as you have telephoned and so on. Uh, heard about Labri in a, in a youth hostel in Oslo, Norway, for the first time. And con he, he doesn't know who it was that told him, and we never have discovered just who it was that told Larry about Labri. This has happened through the years with so many people. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, now that there are the books, people come because they have read the books, and, the books. Um, and have seen the films, um, and have heard about Labrie in other ways. But people still come who really have very, very little understanding of what Labrie is. Mm -hmm. And someone has said, from your questions, I think you need to go to this place in Switzerland. Yes. Uh, yeah. There's this little place where you really can find answers. I think you sound as if you're pretty mixed up about uh, what life is all about. You ought to go there. People come with just that much information and no more. There's some kind of discussion going on in this place mm -hmm. uh, that maybe will help me. And they really have very little idea of what it is. Then others come who have read the library story or who have had people trying to get them to come for years and have resisted <clears throat> and suddenly come. I mean, they're all sorts. Well, we are here in this chapel that overlooks one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen. And we're sitting here with this beautiful little organ. Can you tell us how that came about? Well, it was uh, Jane Stewart Smith who began to pray for an organ and began now, to talk opera, about an organ. she was she an opera, wasn't she? She was an opera singer. Yes, she was an opera singer who became a Christian at Labrie very, very early in the beginning of Labrie. Mm -hmm. And this chapel, a, as the chapel was built, um, Jane had a dream for an organ that would be a real Baroque organ uh, made by a true organ maker for this spot. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Mr. Flentrop, the organ maker of Holland, came yes, and one of the best in the world. Literally uh, studied this chapel he did. and designed this organ to fit this particular space, uh, not only as far as size and looks go, but as far as the acoustics go. He designed this organ for this chapel. Mm -hmm. And then after it was made and placed here, and I might say that the chapel burned in 1972. And at that time, the beautiful wood uh, was scarred and of charred organ. of the organ mm -hmm. to the place where when it was rebuilt, um, they had to paint it. It was not painted originally. It was the natural and beautiful wood. Oh. But um, because of that fire, you see it in this condition painted.
We were most fortunate at Labri to have visit us Mr. Joseph Molnar, the only classical alphornist in the world. Joseph Molnar is the principal French hornist of the Lausanne Chamber Orchestra and has traveled around the world playing solo alphorn with major symphonies, with alphorn and harp and alphorn and organ. We talked with Joseph Molnar and listened to him play. A person would never want to come to Switzerland without hearing the sound of an alphorn. And we are so fortunate today to have the greatest alphornist in the world, Joseph Molnar, and his wife Heidi. Welcome to the program. Joseph, you probably are the only or one of the only alphorn players that play with organ and orchestra. C'est tout à fait juste. Mm -hmm. Parce que toutes les compositions qui existent étaient composées sur une commande de ma part. Mm -hmm. Et comme ça, j'ai toutes les exclusivités d'interprétation. Perhaps you. Yes, uh, many composers have written works for him, and so he has the exclusive uh, right to interpret them. So, actually, you are the only virtuoso alphorn player that is playing concertos with orchestras and pieces with organ, and composers have written all of these pieces for you. Now, uh, Joseph, there are many alphorn players in Switzerland, uh, but most of them play the folk music. Is that right? There are many of the players in Alpine Suisse, and they ask if the majority of the players play folklore. La plupart jouent du folklore seulement. Mm -hmm. C'est sûr. Yes. But they, uh, they don't play the classical music as you do. Is that right? They even don't know. They don't know it music. exists. They, they don't know they the music. They cannot read music. Oh, you mean the Alphorn players do not read music? Yeah, they, um, they do it by ear. By ear. Oh. Yeah. So. Ils le font d'oreille. Ils ne savent souvent pas lire la musique. Oui, ils ne connaissent pas du tout les notes. Ah. Well. Then, uh, if, if a person wants to learn the alphorn, they just listen to a melody, and then they do it by ear. Mm -hmm. But they start now to learn it because they hear him, and so li little by little they learn it. 
Hein? Ils font des progrès maintenant parce qu'ils entendent. Oui. oui. Je donne aussi quelques leçons de temps en temps. On vient de partout prendre quelques leçons. Alors maintenant, ils commencent à apprendre un peu rythmiquement, mm -hmm. un peu musicalement. Ils ont rythme et uh, ils viennent pour prendre des leçons avec mon mari. I see. So you you are starting to inspire a whole new school mm -hmm. of alphorn mm -hmm. playing. Well, that's wonderful. Oui. Yes. Oui. J'ai donc composé maintenant des études pour le corps des arbres qui n'existaient pas du tout depuis des débutants jusqu'à une certaine euh, technique. Yes, Et let me explain that. You you are now writing études and, and exercises method, and, method and, and methods exercises, yes. for the alphorn which mm -hmm. have never been written mm -hmm. before. No. So you really are doing something that is completely unique. Et je cherche toujours des compositeurs qui écrivent des nouveautés. Oui, you're looking for new compositions and yes. composers to write for the Alphorn. Well, I'm sure they will when they hear you play. And thank you so much, Joseph and Heidi, for being on the program today. chapel at La Brie, seated at the little pipe organ, we now continue our conversation with Edith Schaefer, one of the founders of La Brie. Well now, Edith, you know, I've read a lot of your books, a lot of uh, Francis Schaefer's books and Frankie Schaefer's books on art and music, and you've always been so interested in it and really encouraged it, Christian artists, and of course this is the joy of music. And we like to glorify God with our music on the program. How did you get interested in art? And do you, do you really feel that it's really important in the Christian world? We really believe that we've been made in the image of God. And who is God? He's the creator. If mm -hmm. there's any other signature that, uh, or <laughs> logos that, that uh, speaks of who God is throughout the Bible, um, other than, than the specific definition of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I would say Creator, is the, is the most important um, definition of who God is. I've been very struck with it from, from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. It's this God. What God? The Creator. The Creator of creatures who are to be creative. Made in his image to be creative. And, and how are we to be creative? You know, That's music, right. uh, in every way. art, literature, it's, and it's to be the, the excellence uh, of, um, of perfection. I mean, that is our goal. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, um, yes, good music, because it should be the very, very best. Well, now, but, Edith, uh, you have written a book called Hidden Art. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Well, my... Um, 
<laughs> my theme in that book, uh, I must say I hesitated giving a lecture at an arts festival that we had one time. Jane asked me to give a lecture, and I said, oh, Jane, with Dr. Ruckmacher, with all his knowledge on art history speaking, mm -hmm. and you're giving uh, a lecture on, on opera and the history of music and so on, and my husband with his lecture on art and the Bible, I feel that that I'm totally inadequate to give any lecture at your arts festival. And then as I thought about it, I thought, no, there's another aspect altogether. And that is the very thing that was keeping me from wanting to speak uh, is keeping a lot of people from fulfilling the, the talent that they do have because they cannot go to the Conservatory of Music or they cannot go to the art school or they cannot go and study uh, some aspect of, of architecture or interior decoration and so on, and they hesitate expressing what they do have in poetry because they haven't been able to study poetry enough and mm -hmm. so on. My theme in this book is that uh, do what you have talent for up to the level of what you're able to do mm -hmm. in the context of, of enriching the lives of your family, of your roommate at college, of the person that you're sharing an apartment with, of people who are your friends. Everyone needs to express their artisticness mm -hmm. that they've been afraid to express because they think they're not uh, polished yeah. enough. <laughs> well, Edith, you are a great inspiration. Right. And I can see why Labrie, with, of course, God's guiding, has been what it is. And I want to thank you so much for being on the program today and just sharing just a tiny bit. It's, I know we could go on for such a long time, but I really well, appreciate you. it. Let's listen now to some music as played on the Flintrop organ and other artists here at La Brie in Switzerland. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on The Joy of Music as we have visited Switzerland and the famous spiritual retreat, La Brie. Francis and Edith Schaefer, the founders of La Brie, 
have influenced many thousands of people in bringing them to a relationship with Jesus Christ and also in bringing them a new understanding of Christianity and culture. We hope that you have been blessed and inspired by the music and the conversation on the program today. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again on the Joy of Music next week. Thank you for joining us today on the Joy of Music. We have featured music from Labrie in Switzerland with Diane Bish, the First Lady of the Organ, and Diane's special guests, Edith Schaefer, Joseph Molnar, and the Florida Chamber Ensemble.